Okay, YouTubers, I'm doing the uh, final assembly on these Quantico cylinder heads. Um, I wanted to point out uh, some information. So on the uh, larger port cylinder heads, <clears throat> this is pretty much going to hold true for almost any brand that I can think of off the top of my head. But on the larger size intake runners, small block Chevy, LS, a lot of different heads, the screw and stud for the intake rocker will hang into the port. Okay, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but basically the port is cut so large that the bottom of the hole for your rocker arm stud pokes into the intake port. Okay, I'm gonna try to tilt this up for a second. I don't know if anybody can see that because all you can see is just a black uh, it's just the very bottom of the screw in stud enters the roof of the intake port that's not a big deal that's a common uh, procedure in the cylinder head industry porting aftermarket casting that is nothing to be worried about but you have to put thread sealer on your intake stud or if you're running an LS engine the bolt that holds your intake rocker arm has to have thread sealer on it because you know a lot of people think oh I'll put some Loctite on there or if I torque it down to spec there's no way it'll leak that's where you would be wrong and I have seen several engines suck oil because what will happen is oil is going to get up here like as the engine's running oil is going to splash over this whole area under the valve cover and you would not believe how much oil can suck past the threads on this stud or you know like i said on an ls engine you're talking about the bolt that holds the rocker arm down those threads in that aluminum, even on the LS head, if it, you know, if you have a ported LS head or an aftermarket head where that hole intrudes on your intake port, if you don't put thread sealer on there, it will suck oil through this area into your port, into your engine, and you will have a huge mess. Okay, so just take it for what it is. That pokes through into this port, I don't care what engine you're building, you have to put thread sealer on it. What I like to use is the th same thing I use on screw-in studs in the uh, motors that, like small block Chevys, you, when you put in uh, screw-in studs for your head studs, if you put head studs in a block and uh, they protrude into your coolant passages, I like to use this number two gasket maker it's, some people call it aviation grade uh, thread sealant. I don't know why they call it that, but you can buy it at O'Reilly's. You can get various different sized tubes, but this stuff here works great on small block Chevys, big block Chevys, where you're gonna put in head studs and you have to seal that threaded stud into the water jackets or you'll have all kinds of nightmares. I also use this when I seal the studs on cylinder heads but what I was gonna say is on every intake stud I have it sealed with the number two gasket maker on every exhaust stud I have it loctited with blue loctite AFR and a few other manufacturers tell you to put one drop of red loctite on here I don't like putting red Loctite on here because you've got a steel stud into an aluminum threaded hole. And best I can tell by looking down in there, I'm not 100% sure whether this has inserts or not, but these ARP studs into aluminum torque at 45 foot-pounds. So basically I got, a, I got a drop of blue Loctite here, number two gasket sealant here, I got all of them torqued to 45 pounds, okay? For my own benefit, for the video, for generally I'll do this on heads that are especially this clean, 
uh, so that the engine builder, because these heads are going to a shop that are actually building the 400 small block for the customer, okay? So for the customer or the engine builder, I write the specifications on this head as I assembled it. Like here, see if you guys can see, I put IH, the installed height turned out at 1.680. Now remember, we were shooting for a 1.700, but Comp Cam says that it's perfectly okay to be in a plus, plus 20 thousandths or minus 20 thousandths when you install their valve springs. The issue we ran into, as I said in the previous videos, it was coming in way too short, found out the problem. The 10 degree super locks that came on these cylinder heads are plus 50 thousandths locks. Okay, so these locks that came on these heads to achieve the 1.800 uh, installed height for those hydraulic roller springs totally messed up everything. Because uh, we all assumed that this head would have been assembled with all standard locks and everything would be happy that isn't how it worked and this is just another example i stress time and time again check everything when you're building an engine it's a it's a big enough investment that you don't bolt stuff together and throw the dice you don't gamble with that kind of money you don't gamble with somebody's engine you check everything two or three times until it's where you want it to be but so to fix the issue we used a, to get our, you know, installed height for these short little, what is it, 981, what are they, yeah, 981 single comp valve springs to run on that XE262 cam, so the customer did not, because, you know what I mean, we could have this machine down 20 thousandths to get it right at 1.700, but like I said, in the literature, comp tells you ahead of time, if you're within 20 thousandths plus or minus of 1.700 that's good to go so I just wanted to say with the 62 thousandths uh, locator cups which act as twofold they are a 62 thousandths shim to, to take up some of our free space and they are protecting this aluminum as I mentioned before for some reason this company sent out their head with the valve spring setting directly on the raw aluminum, that's a recipe for disaster because as that engine runs, that valve spring will eat down in that aluminum every time, no exceptions. So basically we've got a 62,000 shim. We are now protecting our aluminum. Then we went and bought a set of, well, I can't flip it over because I'm still putting another head together. These are Howard's Racing Components out of Wisconsin. I tried to get the Comp Cam brand plus 50 thousandths locks. They were out of stock. I tried to get some Renegades. They were out of stock. So really the only reasonable option was to get the Howard's Racing Components plus 50 thousandths hardened steel valve locks. And like I said, or I hope you guys watch all my videos, but I'm always assuming the wrong thing. I always run hardened steel or fully machined locks because those cheap stamp steel valve locks, I wouldn't run them on a lawnmower. They are not to be trusted. If you get any kind of cylinder pressure, any kind of RPM, you can literally, it'll spit that lock out like you just, just bam, it'll throw the lock out, valve drops, hits the piston, now we're having a bad day. So, I was gonna show you, just in case you can't see it, I in the head, I wrote the installed height, 1.680 R and G. Some of you might be asking, what does that mean? You check everything. This is part of my you check everything speech. That is retainer to guide. Your retainer to, uh, in this circumstance, is your, gal your positive seal on your valve guide. You have to check that distance between the bottom of that retainer and that valve seal so that you know you're not going to have interference when the engine's running. Um, over on the right, I went ahead and wrote 
that my studs were torqued to 45 pounds per the ARP recommendations. So now that engine builder has, sorry about that, I meant to be a little bit nicer than that. Uh, so the engine builder or assembler, they're gonna know. These springs are set up at 1.680. The retainer to guide clearance free space is 0.608. The studs are torqued at 45 pounds. Clearly he can look where these uh, studs meet the guide plates and he can see that this has sealer and this is blue. So that's taken care of. Um, just if he's curious and for my own benefit, on the intake side of the head, I wrote intake was 207.5 cc, exhaust is 84 cc. Maybe the customer wants to remember that. Maybe the, you know, maybe they'll wipe it off with some brake clean and no one will ever see it. Who knows? But when they go to assemble this 406, they're going to look at this head. They're going to know it's put together right. They're going to know I checked every, you know, clearance and installed height and made sure this thing is within spec and it's going to operate you know the way they want it to so getting a little dry in the mouth there but all I have to do now is put this thing in a bag and assemble the next one so basically that's where we're at I mean it's you know a ready to bolt on and run cylinder head um, just to retouch on this retainer to guide he his cam I think is a four it's like mid to high 460 lift. So as a precaution, you could say, okay, it's a, let's say the high side of his 262 cam is a 469 lift. Well, Comp Cams actually sells a Magnum roller tip rocker arm that's a 1.52 ratio, okay? Some people may not even consider that as, a, as something to uh, factor into their measurements, I catch everything, I put everything into my calculations. That 469 cam becomes a 475 lift cam just by adding that two. You know what I mean? Just by adding that little 10,000, or what is it, yeah. 1.50, 1.52. Just by putting that little two on there, they, they raise the lift of that cam to uh, 475 but what you do what most people do is you want to have a clearance I like to see at least 40 thousandths or so but if you got 0 0.608 from the bottom of your retainer to the top of that uh, valve seal and you deduct let's say 40 thousandths from there 40 or 50 thousandths you're still good well, you know, well over 500 lift before that got, uh, retainer is going to beat the crap out of that valve seal because that's what you don't want to see. If that is not checked and those guy or valve guys needed to be cut down because that would be the next procedure. If you didn't have enough clearance between this retainer and your valve guide or your valve guide and your valve seal, you would have to take a tool and cut that thing down and then remeasure, or you can measure and find out how much you need to cut off, vice versa, you know, same difference. But he's got plenty of clearance, because he'll coil bind, he'll probably coil bind these springs before he'll ever hit. But I check that because I want to make sure that when he puts it on that engine, I don't get that phone call going, hey, you know, it, you know, start beating my valve seal that to death. Now I've got a problem, you know. I'm not, that's not how I do it. I try to make sure this is 100% legit, ready to run whenever the customer leaves here with it. So, anyway, that's where I'm at. I am assembling this head, or I have assembled, that'd be a past tense, the first head, and I wanted to get some information, some nitty gritty on, on the uh, video to kind of outline what I check, why I check it. Um, and what to expect when you go to look at a set of heads or you talk to your machinist or your machine shop guy You want to make sure that that thing's ready to bolt on and, and run so as always What is it? Is this is the time to close the video? You know Please like subscribe share Try to get those uh, views up and uh, give it the thumbs up or whatever it is they do that helps us out. So thanks again guys